Hello and thank you for tuning into Sideline Story, your destination for sports news analysis and discussions. I'm your host Brandon Yates and as always I'm joined by my two fantastic co-hosts Yang Guang and Tian Yu. And today we will be talking about possibly the most exciting league in European football right now, the English mm. Premier League. And I think it's been one of the most hotly contested seasons that we've seen for quite some time. It started out as I guess a four horse race that became a three horse race. That now is seemingly a two-horse race. But at this point in time, with City's uh, dominance and their consistency and Arsenal being a little bit inconsistent at the latter stages of the season, as they have historically done for so many years, that as a United fan, I'm not too upset about. (laughs) Um, But yeah, it's just, it takes so much to um, make City worried at this point in the Premier League, um, as we've seen over the course of the last, I would say, five or six years. So Arsenal have been doing incredibly well, but City are just seemingly unshakable at yeah. uh, that Premier League summit. Um, from Yang Guang, from your side of things, is it looking like a two-horse race? And can Arsenal do anything to upset City's charge for yet another Premier League title? Well, yeah, Arsenal and the City are once again in a stalemate for the Premier League title, just like last season. Mm. Uh, Things are looking familiar now, but I really hope Mm. the story will end in a different way this year. (laughs) Um, To make it clear, I'm not a big Arsenal fan here. No, to put it lightly, I don't think any of us (laughs) care at all about Arsenal's failures. But um, I'm just tired of um, Me total too. dominance of City over and yeah. over they're like, again. They're like the Michael Schumacher of the Premier League. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They just constant, consistently dominate. Max Verstappen. I would mm. like to see the emergence of a challenger and a new Premier League champion. Um, but partic- the thing is, I think they've always had challenges. So yeah. there's always been, like, Liverpool have chipped in here and there. And they obviously won that title in, I think, uh, 2021, right? 2019, 2020. Thank you. But... Um, and since then, there's been competition, but there hasn't really been um, a serious challenge in terms of City looking like they may lose the title. Mm. So I think, you know, with City's ascension, other certain Premier League clubs have gotten stronger, but they just haven't been able to topple City, right? And Arsenal have probably been, in the last two or three years, their closest competitor. Yeah. But that being said, I, I still don't think City have been... Really challenged. Seriously troubled. Mm. Actually, in the beginning stages of the season, it looked a bit shaky. But as we get to those latter stages where it really matters the most, it seems like City find that form Mm. and Arsenal seem to flounder. Yeah, it has always been a two-horse race or three-horse race. But um, either it's um, Liverpool against the City or Arsenal or other teams. But the City is always there these years. Um, But uh, I think Arsenal, considering how long... They were kept away from the top contention in England. I really hope they can manage to dethrone um, City here. And I do think Arsenal has a chance. Um, they look on fire recently. Mm-hmm. Um, we know Arsenal has had ups and downs this season between the winter break especially. Um, mm-hmm. They were seemingly suffering from a fatigue and they played inconsistently and lost some points. Yeah, But now they've... Uh, recollected the form. Uh, their win against Tottenham definitely helped boost their confidence. And I noticed that some <coughs> Arsenal fans are unprecedentedly turning to supporting Spurs now <laughs> and hope they can defeat City in the following yeah. fixtures. Yeah. I think that's one fixture that City needs to look out for in terms of their potential charge to the yeah. title. Mm. I think Arsenal definitely have harder fixtures than City yeah. going towards that uh, tail end of the season. Mm-hmm. But I also think it's going to take a lot for City to drop points, and I don't see it happening. Potentially against uh, Tottenham, that could happen. But I just don't see Pep Guardiola and some of those experienced Premier League players um, you know, choking, as Arsenal have done in previous seasons. But that being said, um, you, know, you mentioned, Yang Guang, that Arsenal defeated Tottenham, but I have to disagree in terms of that boosting their confidence because, yes, they did go 3-0 up in that first half, Mm. but I think also the goals that they conceded um, in the second half where it made a seemingly... Sloppy mistakes. Yeah, Yeah. it made a seemingly easy win for Arsenal look incredibly shaky, and going into the remaining fixtures of the season where they still need City to drop points, I don't know how confident they'll be going into those matches, particularly when you look at the likes of some of the 
uh, teams that they have to face, including Manchester United, who, listen, as a United fan, have been terrible all season. But when it's that Arsenal-Manchester United fixture, form goes out the window, and I'm sure United would love to... um, I mean, look, United won't want City to win another title, Mm. but I think they might want, as a United fan, speaking from myself, I think I would rather have City win another title than (laughs) Arsenal win another title just because I want that City progression to be stopped because I think if they are not stopped, they can dominate the Premier League for the next decade. So going into those last uh, couple of games, I think City might be more confident Mm. than Arsenal. Do you think... Arsenal are confident. Do you think that they can sort out their mentality uh, mentality with those last games? I think so. Um, that's a 5 0 win against the Chelsea. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And then a 3 0 uh, lead in the first half against Tottenham. They've showed they can dominate the top rivals. Mm. They have the attacking power. Yeah. I yeah, think what they you, can yeah. extend their momentum. And Tianyu, what are your thoughts? Oh, well, but uh, from where it stands right now, I would say it's very likely that we're going to see the repetition of last season's <laughs> script. I mean, it's City's title to lose, right? Yeah. I think it's very much within their own hands. Yeah, but this time a little different. Arsenal didn't go wrong in critical matches and they fought very hard. Yet still, City is the same City. And if nothing goes wrong in their way, I think they will still raise the trophy. Yeah. Because if you check out the remaining matches for them, I don't see a single team that can pose the, the slightest threat for them. Tottenham may Not have... Even Tottenham? Yeah, Tottenham might, <laughs> might have the potential to be the savior for their arch-rival Arsenal. They are fighting for a seat for next year's Champions League. Yes, I was about and, to uh, mention that. I think yeah. the fact that Tottenham are still fighting for something, I yeah. think that yeah. could potentially um, yeah. impact that game against City. But that being said... Pep Guardiola is such a genius and Mm. has done it in the Premier League over and over again and across other leagues across Europe. I think that he might have... uh, Look, I know all managers say they take it game by game, but I'm fairly confident that he's identified that game as a potential hurdle. And also, I mean, can Arsenal go the last couple of games without uh, dropping points? It's a huge ask from that uh, Mm. Arsenal team that have an incredibly strong starting eleven, but their squad depth nothing compared to cities mm. and their experience levels at winning titles nothing compared to uh to city yeah if you check out last week's uh, north london derby it has told us how vulnerable tottenham's defense line is and, i mean arsenal's uh, are, no hotspurs oh tottenham yeah, okay. in terms of their top four yeah, push yeah the defense line the, 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 the and history has proven again and again that when playing against city a single mistake in the defense line could cost you the game. <laughs> That's for and, sure. Yeah, and even though Hotspur has shown some highlights in their offensive play this season, I think vit- victory will still go to City. And uh, even though I'm tired, uh, like Yang Guang, I'm tired of watching City winning them all, I- I'm still kind of amazed by how resilient uh, City has been lately. After losing to Real Madrid, they are they were really at their lowest ebb. Mm, and the a heartbreaking team, loss too because yeah. the result that knocked them out took yeah. place at home and yeah. no one was expecting mm. uh, City to struggle yeah, at home really in, that return, uh, in that return leg. Yeah, and the whole team was, was suffering from low morale and they, they were all exhausted. Early Haaland has been kind of silent. He lost his ability to score goals for some time. Mm. But well, still, they I wouldn't survived. go that far. <laughs> I think he, he, he struggles in big games mm. um, and he's also faced some criticism from you know pundits like Roy Keane that say he's got the abilities of a League Two player in mm. terms of his footballing <laughs> abilities. But that being said, I would love to have an out and out goal mm. scorer at yeah. United at the moment. But yeah. despite all of that crit- criticism uh, mm. that's been mentioned and some of the struggles that City have faced, like you've said, they just seem to find a way to bounce back. Yeah, but they, I, d- I do think Tottenham um, against the City that would be the title yeah, decider mm, yeah. this season. Deciding I just Chelsea noticed um, uh, Piers Morgan, a huge Arsenal fan himself. <laughs> Lately said, if Tottenham would be able to stop City, he would be willing to wear Spurs <laughs> shirts in their parade for celebrations for a top four finish. Because he said he don't think Tottenham yeah. can win the Premier League in his lifetime, <laughs> and the top four finish is the best they can possibly do. Yeah. So I love um, the banter from his side. He... I don't even know it's a sarcastic or <laughs> it's um it's um the fact that he supports. Yeah, Tottenham here. Oh, I think if Tottenham case. if Tottenham beats City and it results in Arsenal winning the Premier League, I'm very certain that Piers Morgan will will happily wear <laughs> Tottenham shirts, and I'm sure plenty of Arsenal fans yeah. would be willing to be less uh, angry towards uh, the Tottenham team because and also what a twist that would be. Can you imagine 
Arsenal's biggest rival, Tottenham, helping yeah, Arsenal that's, that's win the title dramatic. and also qualifying for the top four. Yeah. I think Arsenal and Tottenham fans would be very confused about <laughs> how they feel. But um, just looking at, at Arsenal, I mean, obviously we've discussed City and their squad depth and their ability to bounce back. We also know that Arsenal have made um, relatively significant improvements this season and they've been able to maintain that momentum that they had from last season, which I wasn't expecting them to do this season. Um, so, Yang Guang, from your side of things, where would you say Arsenal's biggest improvements have come? And if they win the league this season or if they don't, can they maintain it going forward and consistently mm. battle City? And what do they need to do to consistently keep up with City? Well, I think Arsenal is more mature this season. Uh, their consistency, um, it's not the top level yet, but has become better. Mm. Um, in the latter half of the season, their depth has been good. Uh, they didn't suffer much from injury issues. Um, mm. They are definitely better than last season, majorly because of the joining of some star players. Yeah. I mean, Rice has made Arsenal's midfield yes. so mm. solid. Yeah, another player United missed on, missed out on. <laughs> <laughs> and more organized as well. Uh, you don't see Arsenal often in disadvantage in the battle around midfield mm. this season. Um, and another name, Havertz. <laughs> yes, someone that we've criticised for a long yeah, time, all yeah. of a sudden he's stepping up to the plate. Yeah, yeah he's changed the dynamics of Arsenal's uh, front line. Mm. Um, he's tall, so he can act as a pivot mm. when the opponents play heavy defence, yeah, which, which is Arsenal also... didn't have last season. Yeah, and also I think the fact that um, Arsenal have two very tricky wingers in Martinelli and Saka, yeah. who can cause defence problems and also, um, you know, cut in and score goals but they also with Havertz they also have an extra option in terms of um, putting in crosses for yeah. for Havertz to finish yeah. off so I think even though he's not an out and out goal scorer I think the unique abilities that he has mm. you know I mean just with regards to his you know natural height mm. I think that's added like you've said Yang Kwang another dynamic to Arsenal's mm, attack yeah. which I think has been very important I have to say I owe Havertz an apology me too, yeah. <laughs> me too. <laughs> at the beginning of the season many fans me included uh, thought Arsenal's move to sign Havertz was a joke yeah. and uh, we made fun of him mm. even his hairstyle <laughs> sorry <laughs> we made the statement that he's meant to fail at Arsenal yeah, I mean th I think as a group we, we've always agreed that he's a talented footballer mm. <laughs> but we, we weren't really sure where he kind of fit in and I, we weren't also sure if Arteta would figure out what to do with him mm. so I think we need to apologize to him and also potentially <laughs> to Arteta because it seems like together yeah, yeah, yeah. they've been able to utilize his footballing abilities mm. to, to, the you know, to the most yeah mm. and also I think that like I said his height and just the ability to suck in defenders and create um, an additional headache for defenders in mm. terms of figuring out what the likes of Saka and Martinelli are going to do. Mm. I think that's really um, created more threats um, f through Arsenal's attack that we haven't seen before. Yeah, mm. I have to agree. Um, credits here must be given to Arteta as well. Mm. Obviously, he's got the, the manual of mm. Havertz and uh, managed to switch him on. I also think, um, you know, Arteta deserves a huge amount of credit that he hasn't necessarily been getting lately because obviously the headlines have been dominated by Klopp leaving mm. and Pep Guardiola just doing incredible things with City. But um, uh, Mikel Arteta has gotten to 100 wins in the Premier League mm. 10 games sooner than Arsene Wenger did. And Arsene Wenger oh, was part of that. I didn't yeah, know that. He was part of that invincible season. He mm. won t uh, titles with Arsenal and was one of the top competitors with Manchester United when we were just winning all of those titles in the early 2000s. So I think, and considering Arsenal's not in incredible budget compared to Manchester yeah. City and um, the lack of squad depth that they have, I think what Arteta's been able to do with that squad, or well, with that team actually, not really a squad, just the starting eleven, has been really incredible. Mm. I also think the return of um, Saliba has been big for yeah. Yeah. Arsenal in defence. He's been described as a Rolls-Royce player mm. by some of his teammates. You know, just one of those really quality defenders, amazing on the ball, mm. um, similar to Virgil van Dijk and not similar to Harry Maguire. <laughs> <laughs> I, what can't, I, I, can't, I, I can't go through a football podcast without having a little dig at Harry Maguire, <laughs> although he has been scoring goals for us lately, so fair play to him but um he's just one of those uh defenders that modern premier league teams are looking for you know can defend but also has the ability to play out from the back and i think his return has been huge for arsenal but 
when Arsenal go forward um, through this season and going into next season, particularly with the Champions League and the FA Cup and all of those competitions, I'm very concerned about their squad depth because mm. if you look at that compared to uh, City in particular, that could be a huge concern if Arsenal are wanting to push City in the Premier League and also compete on other in other titles. Do you think that could potentially be something that need to, uh, needs to be addressed in the next transfer window, Tianyu? Yeah, when City got uh, Kevin De Bruyne injured, they still have plenty of more <laughs> choices. Alvarez, yeah, Grealish, okay. Alvarez, yeah, uh, got... Phil Foden, I mean, Bernardo Silva. Yeah, this the lineup... creative options are just immense. Yeah, this lineup is so full of talented names and and when and if you think to, of how many defenders they lost yeah. as well and then all of a sudden Gavardiol and players like yeah. that started they, stepping they up always step up yeah <laughs> and when you look look at the lineup of Arsenal it's gonna yeah it, it is a bit boring for the the depth of their bench because, because I literally think one injury to a key player to Arsenal mm, could derail them yeah, in any yeah, yeah in any competition whereas with City it doesn't seem to be the case even if they lost Haaland for the whole season Alvarez is, is, is one of the best strikers in the world mm, despite these limited resources I think they're still doing a lot better than last season yes yeah. statistically they are they, they are the best team this season because they scored the most goals and uh, conceded the few Mm. And uh, and like I said, they had they had a solid they had a solid record this season when playing against the powerhouses. They uh, in 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 the, in the Premier League they remained unbeaten when facing Manchester City, Liverpool, Hotspur, and Chelsea. That was that was an quite incredible record. And I think I think it says a lot about uh, the improved mentality and uh, yeah. consistency. Of, of these young gunners. I think the only concern there for Arsenal is the squad depth. So I think mm. their starting 11 is pretty much sorted mm. and they've got incredible players in each of those positions. Mm. But I think going into next season, whether they win the league or not, um, and if they want to compete in the Champions League and, and, and not fall out, um, I think that squad depth definitely needs work. And I think mm. Arteta, you know, as he's proven, he's doing an incredibly great job with Arsenal. I'm sure he has an eye on that squad depth going into the next transfer window. Yang Guang, we've talked a lot about uh, City and Arsenal, which is crazy considering how well Liverpool were doing so early on yeah, in the Premier indeed. League season. And they, it was really looking like City were going to lose the title. Mm, yeah. And then all of a sudden, Liverpool just dropped off completely. What has happened there? Well, um, I really feel sorry for I don't. Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you I don't, don't feel sorry for them at all. But I mean, it is a strange phenomenon. Yeah, I, I, I do think the packed game schedules dragged them down uh, a little bit. When you need to play the Europa League, the domestic league, and the FA Cup plus the League Cup, uh, because they went all the way to the final. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can't guarantee team can play its highest level mm. every single game. Absolutely. Liverpool's slump began from that 3-0 home loss in the Europa League semi-final against Atlanta. Mm. That After was appalling. Oh, I remember that game clearly. That was really <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Considering the lineup that they put out as well, I mean, there were some quality players mm. on the field for mm. Liverpool. Yeah. Um, just after that, it seemed like Liverpool was put into water and uh, couldn't come up for a breath. Mm. They were totally worn out because Jurgen Klopp style means the players need to go all out every game. Yeah. Um, his football philosophy is that if I can't run over you, I can't defeat you. Um, there's much demand on the players' energy. And uh, then if for one or two games or even one or two moments, players that don't have strong mental fortitude like Arnold... Uh, make one or two mistakes, it will cost them the points in the tight title race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that altercation between Klopp and Salah on the sideline, mm. um, that sideline story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think that points to some, you know, uh, disagreements in the dressing room? Do you think there might be a bit of tension there? Maybe, you know, Salah wants to go to Saudi and also Klopp leaving. Maybe that's also created some tension in that dressing room, which they haven't really had before. Uh I think in that particular case, I think Salah wants to be in the starting at 11. Mm. No, I mean, not in terms of that specific case, but do you think it was just an example of potentially some unrest in the dressing room? Or do you yeah. think it was I a one? I think so. Yeah. Or, or, or was it a one off incident? For, from my perspective, I think because of Klopp leaving and the, the strange timing of that announcement, I yeah, think yeah. that could have caused some tension in the dressing room. And also because of the demands that he places on some of those players with him leaving and also some players like Salah that want to leave, I think that naturally would create some unrest. Mm. I do think that um, uh, that incident really hurt the team. Mm. Um, it's just another case that uh, 
when everything goes well, uh, all the conflicts are kept underneath. You yeah. don't see them. But um, there's so many um, incidents off the field that we as journalists are not aware of, and sometimes yeah, yeah. sometimes those secrets. Um, do come out on the field, and I think that's what we saw. Mm, yeah. Once they start to lose games,、mm. uh, here emerges the hidden fight.、Mm. Uh, I don't want to exaggerate it, but、uh, to see club leaving Liverpool like this, it's kind of yeah, sad.、Um, of course, by the day when he coaches the final Liverpool game, there will be nothing but applauses. But、um, He would leave without a perfect period.、Mm. That is winning more trophies. I wonder、team. if his timing of the announcement affected Liverpool's season. I mean,、mm. I don't exactly know the details of why that timing happened mid-season, but why would they not wait until the end of the season to make that announcement? It's a very strange、mm. situation, I think, because other players might think, "Well, he's leaving, so I I want to leave now too." I, you、yeah. know, Salah, I want to go to Saudi and make lots of money. You know,、mm. I want to go to Real Madrid. I want to go to Barca. You know, that all all of a sudden those conversations start happening, particularly when the key figure of the team is leaving. So、yeah. I think it definitely created some、yeah. unrest in the dressing room. And it probably also led to some of the poor performances that we saw from Liverpool. I mean, look, there's other factors as well. They've had injuries.、Um, you know, the attackers, for some reason, lately have also been incredibly wasteful in front of goal.、Mm. So there have been performance issues、um, that cannot really be answered at this point. But I think we just have to assume that some of it might have been caused by some of that unrest with Klopp leaving and some. Uncertainty about the futures of some of their star players, like、mm. Salah.、Uh, Tianyu, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think、uh, Liverpool only had two wins in their last six matches across all competitions, and I think、uh, I agree with you guys. It、uh, it started with the announcement of Klopp's exit for the, of the club. We expected the announcement would bring the players all together, you know,、mm. to to become more motivated to get Klopp a final trophy. But it turned out that the things just continue to spiral out of、mm. control. Salah was、uh, Klopp's favorite striker. There were numerous occasions that he openly showed his appreciation for Salah, and, and rightfully so because、yeah. Salah has been one of the most lethal players in the、mm. Premier League over the last decade. Yeah, when Sadio Mane had clashed with Salah in terms of the status in the team,、uh, Klopp chose Salah and put Sadio Mane to in, a, in an assistant role to support Salah. And how? And now his favorite student. Was yelling at him on,、mm. on the pitch and ignored him after the game. It was it was terrible. And to make things worse, after his manager sought to put out the flames, Salah poured petrol on them. He said, "There's going to be some fire today if I <laughs> speak during interviews after the game." But to be and, fair, he bit his tongue and he didn't say anything, which、mm, I think is also credit to him because yeah, it's、mm. very professional. Because we've seen with like, for example, Ronaldo's、mm. interview with Piers Morgan,、mm. <laughs> how things can really go the other way. <laughs> Yeah, but still, I think he had no reason to talk like that to、yeah. his manager, someone who found his talent and gave him so much support.、He、Look, it does happen, though.、So、I mean,、game. arguments do happen. I think I, I don't, I don't think there's any ongoing animosity between Salah and Klopp. You、mm. know, maybe they just disagreed about something in that particular game.、Mm. Um, and you know, sometimes words are exchanged and sometimes people fight. But I'm sure that. The relationship between Klopp and Salah will remain when the season ends,、mm. and I think they will also value、um, the achievements that they、yeah. were able to、yeah. to go out and achieve with each other.、Mm. And speaking of achievements or lack thereof,、um, let's look at Manchester United for next season. Yang Guang, I am not optimistic at all. I think they can potentially <laughs> compete in the top four if certain changes are made. But do you think they can compete for the title? I hope so.、Uh, <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me too. And I think they might be able to surprise some. Some fans,、mm. but do you think a lot of changes are required? Uh, yeah, uh, they need to sign a lot more players and get rid of some too. I think. I think the likes of Casemiro, Varane, Maguire. <laughs> Um, I mean, no. I mean, I, look, nothing against them, but I just think that they aren't going to be part of the future of Manchester United, and I、mm. don't think they're going to help them compete for a title. And their manager,、uh, yeah, I know there are a lot of finger pointing to Eric Ten Hag,、mm. but I was wrong about Havertz. Mm, maybe Ten Hag can turn things nope, around. No, Ten Hag、again. has to go. <laughs> Tianyu, your thoughts <laughs> before we finish off? <laughs> I agree with you.、Uh, top four, the most. <laughs> yeah, at but best, I think. Title,、yeah. but in the title race, still a question mark. Because absolutely, we, we've seen some hopes, some rising stars like Alcantara、mm -hmm. and Maynou. Yep.、Um, there's、Holland. some there's some potential there, but to win a title, you need far more than just a couple of emerging stars. Yeah, and I think United might also face a battle to keep some of those stars if things don't turn、yeah. around quickly. So,、yeah. 
I think Manchester United is going to be one of those teams to watch next season in terms of what they can do to turn things around. And of course, the remainder of this Premier League season will be fantastic to watch. Whatever happens, it's going to be a very dramatic finish, whether it results in City winning another title or Arsenal winning their first title for quite some time. But that is all we have time for on this week's episode of Sideline Story. Thank you so much for joining us. And of course, we will be back next week with our latest topic and we'll see you then. Thank you.